Hi internet, welcome to my YouTube channel, I'm Udoka. Welcome to my page where I'm usually talking about myself and my own mental health, but I'm usually talking about whatever I want. Today we're talking about Trisha Paytas and viewing her through the lens of the Narc Alert. Um, I always recommend that if you're going to subscribe, subscribe for the vibe because uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep making videos like this. It just depends. But what you will always get on my channel is my opinion and my two cents. Um, before we get into this, I want to address the last video that I uploaded. Mysterious T annoys me a lot right now. Um, Mysterious T still annoys me. But I did ask in this video for people to comment what did they think, if they agreed with my rationale or if there's something that I was missing. And the uh, um, people who disagreed with me, pre I think pretty clearly what y'all are trying to say that I'm missing is the compassion um, because I'm talking about Mysterious T when she was in a vulnerable time. So I appreciate that. I will think more about my tone when I'm talking about people who are sharing their vulnerability. Um, but other than that, I stand by the same qualms that I have, the same issues I have that I think are actually really important things to consider uh, really irk me. And my criticism would actually be harsher if she wasn't so emotional. But I just wanted to say that I appreciate the comments on this video. And if you haven't seen this video yet, um, uh, you have fun. <laughs> Let's get back to this one. If you don't know about the Narc Alert, this channel is literally dissecting different video clips of people who display traits of narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder. And when I saw this channel, I just immediately subscribed. You see, I get notifications because I don't know. Um, there have been several times in my life where I had to live with a narc, be with a narc, um, be subservient to a narc, what have you. And over time, I started to learn like what is an arc and how they can try to manipulate you and how do you protect yourself? And um, I don't know, it's just really important to me that this type of content is out there. Um, like it's a release for some people and it's a learning moment for some people. And for some people, it's like, you know, these T channels is like just entertainment. Whichever way you're viewing it, we're going to do it to Trisha Paytas. You can see that this channel does a lot of Amberlynn Reed. I'm not too savvy on the Amberlynn lore, but every time I watch one of these videos on Amberlynn, I'm like, bruh, somebody could do the exact same thing to Trisha Paytas and have like a full page of just Trisha Paytas. So we're going to look at this video today through the Narc Alerts lens. I want to use her intro because her intro is just perfect. So here's what we're doing today. Check it out. One, two, three. Hello and welcome to the Narc Alert, the channel where we look at different YouTubers and celebrities and point out some traits that they seem to show that fall within the spectrum of narcissistic personality disorder or NPD. Please do not send any snark to our subjects. First of all, let me say very clearly once again, we are having a little messy fun. This is not a diagnosis. We're simply going to point out some traits that this YouTuber shows us that seem similar to traits that fall within NPD. So key points to remember, messy fun and not a diagnosis. Happy Friday, my lovely. All right, got it. So we're literally <laughs> going to do it to this video. If you don't know what this is, after Trisha posted that really stupid 
um, explanation of her actions video on her main blondes for MJ whatever page. She posted this. She posted this on the 17th on her other page, Trisha Paytas. Let's see what's going on. All right. We have finished. Happy Yom Kippur. Did you know you can actually say Happy Yom Kippur? We were talking about this the other day, and you're like, well, it's not really a happy day. Because I said it, because I didn't know. I was like, Happy Yom Kippur. He's like, we don't want to say happy. But I think Moses and the poor on TikTok say different. They actually say you can say Happy Yom Kippur because it's actually a day to reconnect with God. Like so I find it really interesting how lately she's been like back on her religion kick. Um, before she privated her Twitter, she was posting Joel Osteen like every other day. And now she's, um, just super excited to share with us some, another religious excuse for her to, um, act like she has a connection to a God. Like he said he was taught growing up. Okay. So Moses and Zipporah are these this couple they're an orthodox jewish couple that i absolutely love like i love because i really don't know a lot i ask moses but sometimes i feel like i know him with it but anyways they like always are talking about judaism and anyways we just finished they were just talking about how we finished rosh hashanah the new year uh shana tova to all the jewish followers but they were talking about how Yom, he was taught like yamgapur was like oh my god like a really scary say that day that you must like beg god for forgiveness like you know and he was like and he's like there is like truth there is like part of that because it's like for right he's like there you know there's like a day of atonement he's like but like he goes it's really like a day to reconnect it's not like a scary day and he goes you know the yeah, fast day scary. it's just not a happy day <laughs> no but like um so moses who is actually a jewish person who grew up in a country where one of the main religions is judaism is correcting her on her nuance she's describing the day as a scary day she first she described it as it's not really a happy day which he agreed with and then she said, it's a scary day. And he said, no, it's not scary. And she's like, no. <laughs> I didn't even let her finish because, because I feel like that is, that's kind of a narc tendency to, um, rather than acknowledge somebody who knows more than her, um, she's now going to try to backpedal or just, kind of gloss over what he said or ignore what he said. Um, which wouldn't make sense. Like a, a person who doesn't have this tendency would at least acknowledge what Moses is saying, especially considering Trisha is in a position of learning. She said she, I don't know much. She says she doesn't know much. She's dating somebody who knows a lot. And in this video, she's showing how little reverence she has for that. No, but you're reconnecting with God. He goes, he goes and that's why you fast, because you're almost above human needs, where you're almost angel-like. This is like, it's like, I'm literally like paraphrasing what he said, but pretty much close to exactly what he said. But he's like, you're almost angel-like. And a lot of people wear a kittle, which is like a white robe on Yom Kippur. And actually, like, I have white on, but like, Yom Kippur has passed now. But like, if, oh no, Yom Kippur. Yeah, well, it has passed by now. But like, oh my God, I'm wearing kittle. Like, just so random. But like, a white thing. because she, She's not wearing a... I don't know, I can't pronounce it right now, but she's not wearing that. She's, that's not what, that's not what it is. What she's wearing is not what it is. Because you're almost angel-like because you're like, you're fasting because you don't need the human needs. Like you're like connecting to like God more, which that was really interesting. I was like, oh, and then he goes, well, and you can say happy Yom Kippur for an easy fast. He wishes an easy fast to all his Jewish followers. Right. And I was like, that's so, like, I love them. And I love the way they explain things. Happy Yom Kippur to this person not moving. We're not going to beep because it's that. But how do you say it in Hebrew? Which one? Gemar Chatima Tova? Yeah! Gemar Chatima Tova? Gemar Chatima Tova? 
Okay, but now she'll listen to him because now she's beckoned on him. Before when he corrected her, n n n that was a no moment because she didn't beckon for him yet. But now that she's beckoned, she's listening. Yeah, it was really exciting. Yom Kippur has passed, so now we get to eat today. And we're really excited because the day we're eating is actually our wedding venue we're tasting the food so it's really exciting but anything you would like to add as a fellow jewish person for excuse me as a fellow jewish person so in her mind she thinks she's jewish she thinks she's jewish now even though she doesn't even know the freaking basics the basic holidays of judaism but we've seen in front of me is how she tried, she kept trying to say she's Jewish, even though there's a certain process that she's going through, that she admitted that she hasn't finished that process of converting to Judaism. But she kept trying to also claim that she's ethnically Jewish. Um, it was really, it was really like, like, I don't know, if if you're not, like, if you're, like, you're just white, you don't have any other ethnicities that you're attached to or culture or religion that you're attached to, um, it's something you may have never experienced. But if you are part of any ethnic group, special religious group, um, uh, any minority group, you have experienced somebody trying to force themselves into the group when when they're not and it's it it feels very offensive because it feels like you don't actually care about this group you just care about yourself and this is your hobby of the month fantasy of the month and it's really annoying so when she says as a fellow Jewish person, she is including herself in that, even though she is not Jewish. She is somebody who is learning Judaism. For the new year. Oh, the other thing is to not only ask God for forgiveness, but also to forgive others that have like... Yeah, people... Isn't that interesting? She is undergoing a lot of backlash and after she posts a really dumb statement she posts this video about how this is a time that we need to be forgiving people hint hint wink wink we're supposed to be forgiving trisha oh well, actually text other people or call other people and tell them you know if there's anything i did i was asking sorry forgiveness and uh, and i forgive you for everything that's what hit so to people me like, uh, so everyone calls everyone it's like in israel you're like on the phone it's like a train hello yeah if i didn't think they were for you okay really no i love that that like hit me so hard because like i understand so many people don't like can't forgive me or like they don't want to go move past but i was like you know this is why i love like religion in general because i like the teaching because it's it's very similar to Catholic she likes the idea that in some universe she's forgivable and in some universe the fact that a lot of people don't like her are upset with her find her irredeemable there's still a place where none of that matters which, you know, like on a philosophical note, it doesn't matter, right? Like philosophically, you are who you are. You have this one life to live and your validness is purely on the basis that you exist. I'm just so, I'm just saying, I understand that philosophically, but here in like the real functional world, it seems like this is her escape from the reality she doesn't want to face ever. Catholicism, like, I, I, there's a lot of similarities between Christianity and Judaism because of, like, the Old Testament and stuff like that. But they have that same sort of thing of, like, forgiveness. And, like, I do think it, like, heals yourself. It heals the other person. Like, if you ever. So when he said that, he's like, yeah, you ask God to forgive you of your sins. But he goes, you know. 
It's good for Trisha if we forgive her, and it's also good for us. You should forgive others for anything that they've done or, you know, whatever. So I just thought that was really cool. But anyways, and it's a new year, so it's like obviously Shana right, told us. Fresh that. start. Do you have anything you want to add to the Yom Kippur? Happy Yom Kippur. I hope you guys all had a great fast. What else? Well, in Israel, kids don't have to fast. But nobody drives and all the streets are empty. So for its children, it's the most exciting time in the world. We get to ride our bikes on the streets and highways and everyone. So it's like children take over the country. The whole country is just children's on bicycles all over. It's a really <laughs> special and exciting time that you never, ever, ever experience in any other country, in any other place, any other time. Because people just stay home. Because you're not supposed to drive or anything. Yeah, no driving, no electricity, nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you imagine that fantasy, that's like, I don't know, it's like this imaginary world where there's just children on bicycle everywhere. <laughs> that actually exists in Israel. That's so cool. Uh, Kippur. Did you ever cheat on Yom Kippur after the age of, of 13? I always had candies under my bed. Oh my gosh. Oh my. By the way, we're not Orthodox. And I don't claim to be. We don't claim to be at all. Obviously, I'm not even like Jewish fully yet. But I like. If you're not Jewish fully yet, why do you consider yourself a fellow Jewish person? The traditions, and I like that. And Moses and Sephora, I love their TikToks. And I love that people that are, that explain things and like wish everyone well, even to like their non Jewish followers. That's just like, oh, I just like love them. So, anyways, love. She talks. You ever, you ever meet someone, okay, ladies with, like, naturally curly hair, you ever meet someone who just comes up and it's like, oh my god, I love your hair, oh my god, I just want to touch it, I just love it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, it's like they're fetishizing your hair. And so that's the sense that I'm getting from Trisha here. It, I don't know, it doesn't feel like she has a real reverence for Judaism. What it feels like is it's a cute, fun little distraction from reality. And I just love it so much. And it's going to be my obsession for, you know, this year, my obsession is Judaism. You know, because years before, her obsession was Quentin Tarantino. Her obsession was... <laughs> Uh, being Britney Spears, her obsession was being Anna Nicole Smith. Um, there was a time her obsession was being like super Christian Jesus lover. This year, it's Judaism. Love everyone. Forget the sins. Forgive her sins. Yom Kippur or Happy Yom Kippur or. Gamal Khatimatullah. Gamal Khatimatullah. We forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so when this video first came up I was thinking Trisha you really just gonna act like nothing's going on so I didn't even really pay attention to the video I, I didn't I, I just instantly disliked it. I, I disliked that this video even existed um, but then I was like you know what let me actually listen to this and now I'm like, oh my God, did she really upload this to hint to everyone that we need to forgive her? <sighs> yeah. So y'all, if that type of content was really your tea. I highly recommend checking out the Narc Alert. Subscribe to her channel. Um, she has really interesting commentary. I don't even know who Amber <laughs> Amberlyn apparently is breaking up with girls and dating new girls and all of this. I don't know Amberlynn, but I find the commentary so interesting, insightful, and of course, I don't necessarily agree with every little comment that she makes, just like I'm sure you didn't agree with every little comment that I made, but again, this is just some messy, analyzing fun that we're having in the midst of all this craziness that hopefully maybe also enlightens enlighten some people on some 
on some types of traits. But yeah, this is not the type of content I post often. So if you want more, check out the Narc Alert. And I appreciate you being with me on this video. You could have picked any other video about Trisha Paytas to watch. But you came over here. For that, I thank you. If you liked it, please like it so other people can find it. Until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out.